Today we have lots of news coming out of Dodge. If you haven't already seen the video on the Charger and Challenger, be sure and check that out. But I think the bigger news from Dodge is that there is a 2021 Dodge Durango that has received a refresh and a whole lot more power under the hood. Now, if you don't know it by now, I do happen to own a Dodge Durango. It's a 2018 Citadel model, and I bought it for a very specific reason. It can tow. It's one of the very few mid-size three-row crossovers that will tow over 5,000 pounds. When properly equipped, it will tow up to 8,700 pounds, and that is more than some full-size SUVs out there. Back in 2018, the Durango had a higher tow rating than something like a Chevy Tahoe or a Chevy Suburban, and the Durango tows extremely well. Part of that is because it's heavy, part of that is because because it's on the large side for the three-row crossover segment. And the rest of it has to do with the fact that it has essentially the same drivetrain that we find in a Ram 1500. Obviously a different rear axle, but the same engine and the same transmission. For 2021, all of that continues in the Durango, and we get a little bit more of a focus on towing than back in 2018 when I bought mine. I had hoped that in the meantime, Ford would bring us a more tow-capable Explorer, but that doesn't really seem to be the case. In the Ford envelope, if you really want to tow over about five or 6,000 pounds, you really do have to end up in their full-size SUVs or their pickup truck line. But if you're looking for something that's a little bit easier to park, a little bit better on the gas under normal situations than some of those V8 pickup trucks out there, and has the ability to have a third row, then the Dodge Durango is going to be one of the better options. It's also going to be significantly less expensive than a full-size SUV. That's another reason that I ended up with mine. Now, unfortunately, 2021 does not bring us a new Durango. Instead, it brings us a significantly refreshed Durango. On the front, you'll notice that we get an all-new front-end design. Now, all versions of the Durango for 2021 will have this sort of frowny face grill going on. We don't get the same kind of differentiation that we found in the previous model year, where we had a slightly different grill in the SRT models and in the Citadel model, etc. We get basically the same sort of shapes going on in the entire Durango lineup. Now, obviously the hood changes because we do get a scoop if you get the SRT models or the RT with a particular trim package, and things get uh, tweaked here and there for the Citadel model versus the regular models of Durango as well. But the look is gonna be much more consistent than before. Although we'll know a little bit more when it comes closer to the on-sale time for the 2021 Durango, it doesn't look like any of the hard points have changed. So the doors, the quarter panels, the windows, all the glass, etc., that all appears to be exactly the same as the 2019 model. We are getting some new wheels, just as you'd expect at the refresh. And if we move to the back of the Durango, we don't really find much of a change here. This looks to be basically the same rear hatch and rear bumper design that we find in the current Durango. Let me know what you think about the design down there in the comments section. I wish that they had taken the time to perhaps restyle the third row side windows in the Durango. Those do look a little bit old school. I think the rear end looks pretty decent and the front end definitely looks angry and upset if that's what you're into. But I think I like the Citadel grille on the 2019 and 2020 Durango just a little bit better. Now, obviously I haven't seen these headlights in person, but the headlights are now gonna be full LEDs for 2021. And we have full LED fog lights as well that are separated into sort of four little modules, two on each side. I think the new headlamp design looks very attractive. With the exterior being really a mild refresh, I'd expected more of a mild refresh on the inside, but we get a little bit more of a drastic restyling to the dashboard. This is an entirely new dashboard unit, and the big news is that in the middle of the dash, we have new infotainment systems. Now, unfortunately, the 8.4 inch system that you'll find in the base model, that is gonna be standard in the two lower end trims, SXT and GT. That is essentially just a restyled version of what we see in the 2020 version. But all the other trims are gonna get a new 10.1 inch Uconnect 5 infotainment system. This is the all new software package that we saw announced a while back and we saw in the Chrysler Pacifica. This is gonna give us Sirius XM 360L as well as over the air firmware and map updates. We're looking at one of the top end trims here. You can tell that not just because of the large infotainment system, but also because of the stitched dashboard. We have this two-tone scheme going on and the lower portion of the dashboard also features some stitched material, which definitely makes it a little bit more premium feeling than the current generation Durango. The current Durango has a really nice leather stitched upper section of the dashboard, but some hard plastics lower. And it looks like they've addressed that with this refresh. We also get new climate control and infotainment controls below that, along with physical buttons for the seat ventilation, heating, and 
and steering wheel heating, something that we didn't find in the previous model. Looks like we have USB-C and USB-A ports and basically the same shifter design that we have now. Instead of a knob to activate the two-speed transfer case, it looks like we're getting a button and basically the same cup holders. Now, you'll notice that they've basically grafted some of these newer interior components onto the older interior hardware. And that's why moving over to the driver's side, we find basically the same steering wheel that we find in the current model. We don't find the newer steering wheel, for instance, that we see in the Ram 1500 pickup truck. I'm a little bit surprised that they didn't at least try and graft that new steering wheel on, but I think the bigger deal for some folks out there is going to be that behind the steering wheel, we have the same 7-inch partial LCD instrument cluster that we find in my Durango. Now, I think that that's better than a pure analog instrument cluster. However, it doesn't feel quite as modern as I think a full LCD unit would be if they had borrowed one out of something else in the lineup. Now, I don't know if they've updated the graphics for 2021, but just giving this a casual glance, it looks like not only have the graphics stayed the same, but also the physical dials on either side for the tachometer, for the engine temperature and fuel level, looks like those do remain the same. It's a little bit difficult to tell from these photos, but aside from reworked interior trim panels, which definitely look a little bit classier than the sort of satin gloss panels that you find on the 2020 Citadel, it looks like the doors are essentially the same as the current model. Now that would make sense because the physical door, the metal part on the outside hasn't changed. So I don't think that the interior components there have changed. They may have changed the materials very slightly, but the shapes all look essentially identical. There were some initial rumors that we might find the e-torque mild hybrid system from other vehicles under the hood of the Durango, but it doesn't look like that's the case. So things are going to start out with the 3.6 liter V6 that produces either 293 horsepower or 295 horsepower, depending on the model that you get. We then have the same 5.7 liter Hemi V8 that I have in mine at 360 horsepower and 390 pound feet of torque. I'm a little bit surprised that they didn't update this engine tune and give it the same horsepower and torque figures that we find in the Ram 1500. Essentially, that's the same as before. We also find the 6.4 liter Hemi in the SRT Durango if you want a bit more power, 475 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. And then we have the new crazy edition for 2021. And this one I'm really intrigued by. According to Dodge, this is going to be a one-year special edition for the Durango only. They've stuffed the 710 horsepower tune of the 6.2 liter supercharged engine under the hood. It produces six 640 pound-feet of torque. And Dodge is claiming that this is going to be the most powerful SUV you can buy. And that certainly seems to be true. I can't think of anything that produces more power that is currently on sale right now. Let's talk about the numbers here for just a moment. Let's diverge. Uh, the SRT Hellcat Durango will go zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. For the record, that is faster than the Lamborghini SUV currently. It has a National Hot Rod Association certified quarter mile time of 11.5 seconds and a top speed of 180 miles miles an hour. And just for reference, the Durango is about a cupcake shy of 6,000 pounds of curb weight. By the time you put me and my suitcase in it, it is at 6,000 pounds. It is not a lightweight three row crossover. Now, that shouldn't surprise you too much, of course, because the closely related Grand Cherokee is absolutely insane as well. And for some reason, the Durango is getting just a tiny bit more power than we find in the Grand Cherokee. Of course, we haven't heard any details on the 2021 Grand Cherokee. It may very well get the same tune of engine. More surprising than this, the SRT Hellcat Durango is going to get the same tow rating of the SRT 392 Durango at 8,700 pounds. That really is an interesting combo because a lot of performance SUVs out there are not designed to tow and FCA for some reason decided that all of their vehicles needed to have either better or similar towing capabilities to engines below. According to Dodge, the suspension tweaks are responsible for improved handling here, just as you'd expect. And we have launch control and launch assist, the same two technologies that we find, of course, in the Hellcat versions of the Charger and the Challenger. Perhaps the most surprising specification on this sheet is the braking distance. They're claiming that they'll be able to stop the SRT Hellcat Durango from 60 miles an hour back to zero in 116 feet. I'm really looking forward to testing that one out because it definitely takes longer in my Durango than that. We have six piston Brembo high performance brakes up front and four piston in the rear and they're huge, 15.75 inches up front. 
Now back to the regular Durango models that everybody else is going to be buying here. What I found interesting is that they now have a new tow and go package is what they're calling it on the 5.7 liter Hemi V8. Now previously the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 towed just over 7,000 pounds, just under 7,500 pounds depending on the options that you selected. But with the new tow and go package, you'll be able to tow 8,700 pounds in that 5.7 liter model. Now I've certainly had that kind of weight behind my Durango, so I was wondering exactly what they've changed in order to give it a higher tow rating. So here's what they've done. They've given us basically the wheels and tires and Brembo brakes, flares and sills and exhaust out of the SRT model. Part of this is also the limited slip rear differential that's electronically actuated, SRT active damping, and they've also given us the center differential from the SRT model. So rather than being more of a slip and grip style, this one is an active center differential that has a number of different torque split profiles. It can do 30% front, 70% rear, or 50-50, which is what it tries to do in the tow mode for improved stability and control. Now, rather unfortunately, that RT tow and go package cannot be combined with the Citadel trim, which is the more luxury oriented version of the Durango. So if you want that one, it looks like the tow rating is going to be basically the same as we see now, maximum of 7,400 pounds. The one thing they didn't tweak with the tow and go package, which does surprise me a bit, is they haven't changed the axle ratio in the back. So it's still the same 3.09 axle ratio that you find in the other 5.7 liter models. So it's not like they've given it a more aggressive rear axle ratio for better hill climbing performance when you have 8,700 pounds on the back. So know that when you have those heavier weights on the back, it is not going to feel as peppy as the SRT model. The calculus for whether or not the Durango is right for you hasn't really changed for 2021. This is still one of the truest crossovers available in America. Now, I know some people want to call it an SUV. I would say technically it's a crossover because crossover itself is supposed to be a blend of SUV and passenger car-like features. And here we have a unibody vehicle with rear wheel drive, the engine and transmission out of the Ram pickup truck line, essentially. So this really is one of the few crossovers available in America and something like a Highlander or Pilot or those kinds of things. They're really sort of overinflated all wheel drive minivans having a lot less to do with any trucks out there. But whether that's right for you will really depend on what you're looking for. As a result of its design and its rear wheel drive layout, the Durango is big on the outside, but it's not necessarily big on the inside. It's not going to seat eight passengers like a Toyota Highlander or a Honda Pilot or a Kia Telluride or a Palisade, etc., etc., etc. It's not going to have as much room in the back seat as something like a Volkswagen Atlas. It's not going to have quite as much room on the inside even as something like the Ford Explorer. But on the other hand, we have more power than we find in <laughs> any of the other crossovers out there. So if you want a V8 in your crossover or your small midsize SUV, whatever you want to classify this as, this is really the only option outside of a full-size SUV. So you're not going to find a V8 engine under the hood of the Ford Explorer, Mazda CX-9, etc. You also aren't going to be able to find anything outside of the Durango or those bigger SUVs that has three rows and has the ability to tow these kinds of weights. And again, that's the exact reason that I got the Durango. If on the other hand, I needed a three row crossover and I was really interested in third row accommodations, more modern feel, fuel economy, et cetera, there are going to be better options out there for you. Absolutely without question. Something like a Toyota Highlander is quite practical. It seats eight, gets nearly 40 miles per gallon. That's not where the Durango is. Instead, the Durango is in a different little niche world and that niche world, happens to be exactly where I need it. In the Venn diagram of things, the Durango was a pretty decent fit. Now, does that mean that I'm going to run out and get a 2021 Durango? I haven't decided that yet. A uh, little secret here, I ended up leasing my 2018 Durango for a few reasons. The first one was I wasn't sure what the new Aviator or uh, Ford Explorer would look like for 2020 or whenever that came out. And I was really hoping that that would get more towing ability than it did. So when those models launched, I was a little bit disappointed and thought to myself, well, gosh, I guess I'm going to hang out with my Durango forever. And now I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe I will uh, upgrade to an SRT Durango, not a Hellcat Durango, because that's too crazy for me. But I don't know, maybe an SRT 392 Durango is in my future. Obviously, you'll have to stay tuned for that. That's not going to happen at least until uh, maybe March or April of 2021. 
In the meantime, let me know what you think about the 2021 Durango down there in the comments section below. And let me know, would you be interested in cross shopping this? And what would you cross shop it to? Would you be cross shopping the Durango against full size SUVs as something that's a bit more practical and easy to park? Or as an alternative to an average mainstream three row crossover like a Highlander, a Pilot or a Ford Explorer? Let me know and I'll see all of you later.